When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, he entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And, another, and to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks for what is left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord.
And it's Jesus in us. The creativity, the love, the, the power of Jesus in us. And each and every one of us. And I have to, I'm, I'm going to quote Pope Francis because he wrote something so beautiful on that this last week about how we are the living stones. And being living stones, being cloaked, means this. No one is useless to the church. No one, young or old, no one is useless to the church. No one, he says, again, is useless to the church. And so if anyone chance to say, some of you get home with you, you're useless, that is not true. No one is useless in the church. We are all needed in order to build this temple. No one is secondary. Ah, I am the most important one in the church. No, we are all equal in the eyes of God. This is the vicar of Christ. This is our leader in the church on earth. We are all equal in the eyes of Christ. But one of you might say, Mr. Pope, sir, you are not equal to us. But I'm just like you. We are all equal. We are brothers and sisters. No one is anonymous. All form and build the church. Nevertheless, it also invites us to reflect on the fact that the temple wants the brick of our Christian life that we're living. That some, something is wanting in the beauty of the church. Something is wanting in the beauty of the church. Our world can be so much more beautiful. And you and I cloak with Christ. And we're all important. And we're all called to this work. And as Jesus, as the followers come to him in the gospel, he says, follow me. And he will do the work in us. And in our second reading today, St. Paul says, St. Paul's teaching is we're set free from, so we can be set free for. So we're set free from sin, so we can be set free for the things of the kingdom today and the power of that Jesus wants to work through us. I've just met with so many people in the last couple of days. They're not free. You know why they're not free? Because they have not forgiven. They're living in a state of bitterness and unforgiveness, and they're not free. You know what you get from them? You get bitterness. You get smallness. You get the poison of the evil one. Because they, they haven't, and the, haven't forgiven. Whether, you know, they haven't forgiven for the fight they've got in, or for what this person said to them, or what maybe they did in their life to themselves or to someone else. But St. Paul teaches we can be set free from that, so we can be, you're not only set free from the sin and the darkness, the darkness is not only taken away, but the light of Christ comes in. And we're set free for the life of Christ. To so say, you know what, I've been set free, and you can be set free. You don't have to live this small life. You don't have to live in the past. You can live in the present. And then you can start hearing what God wants you to do as he builds his house in and through you, as he plows through your soul. Again, where does that get us back to? Confession. He can plow through your soul. <clears throat> sets you free from sin. Sets you free for pro proclamation of his kingdom according to his infinite goodness. And we celebrate that. So it's exciting, this life that we're called to as he builds us his house. Because the house that he can build in our heart is going to be much more beautiful than any church we can build. And that can be a beautiful thing. <laughs> and it's just being open to the beauty of God and how he wants to relate to us. Pope Francis, he met with a, a bunch of Italian Jesuit grade school and high schoolers the other day. They came all from Italy to, to meet with him. He had five pages of prepared notes. So he walked in with five pages of prepared notes. And he saw all these school children there. And he goes, I have five pages of prepared notes. That's going to be boring. Let's talk. That's the Holy Spirit. That's relationship. And that's what you and I can be doing. As he calls us in to this great life. Francis talks about. So I like to ask ourselves, how do we live our being in the church? Are we living stones, or are we rather, so to speak, tired, bored, indifferent Christians? That's an ugly sight. We're called to be a beautiful sight, to listen to the Holy Spirit. He says, throw down the notes. We throw down the notes and we say, let's talk. 
so we can fill up for the beauty that is wanting in our world as we let Jesus plow through our hearts with the magnificent life that he's always offering us at each and every moment. Let us pray that we'll be alive and joyful Christians for others. That's what church is all about.